Hello guys, welcome to Devastry and welcome to a newly updated Mernstack authentication tutorial. So last year I have made this tutorial, um, but I'm going to make an update to it because my knowledge on authentication has improved. So there will be some new features that we'll be talking about. Not that the last one was necessarily completely insecure, but there were some flaws in there that uh, you could fix. Um, and so we're fixing a couple of things, for example, by implementing cookies. Um, and we're also going to talk about deploying your app. So when you're deploying your app, of course, you're going to put it live. And there are some differences between the um, security for just having your app run locally and for having it run in on a server so that other people can access it. So we'll talk about the changes in your code you need to make with that as well. This is not going to be a complete Mernstack tutorial. I do have videos on my channel talking about specific things about the Mernstack, like React. Uh, I also have recently uploaded a course on Udemy, which will go into way more detail about the Mernstack and also about way more detail about authentication. So check out that course, link in the description below. But I hope you guys will find this newly updated uh, for 2021 Mernstack authentication tutorial useful. All right, so let's get started with this little project. Um, I'm going to create two new folders. One called client and one called server. Um, and I've placed that in a folder called Mern of. Oh, feel free to name your project folder anything. But we have two other separate projects. One for the client or the browser app we're going to make with React. And one for the server that's going to run ExpressJS on Node. We'll start with the server. So let's open that up in Visual Studio Code. And... In here, I'm going to create a new file called package.json. So it's a JSON file called package. And in there, I'm just going to create an empty object. So we're going to set up an npm package in this, or with this package.json, or let me put it another way. We're going to use npm to install all the packages. And for that, we need our own package.json to keep track of the dependencies. Um, so we're going to install some JavaScript libraries that, for example, give us uh, Express.js, the E in Mernstack, or Mongoose, which is a JavaScript library to interact with MongoDB, the M in Mernstack. So let's open up a new terminal. We can go up here to the top, over to Terminal, click on New Terminal, or you can press Control and the backtick key, and it opens up your terminal. And in Visual Studio Code, the um, working directory of a newly opened terminal is automatically set to your opened folder in VS Code. So we've opened up our server folder, as you can see, that is also selected in the terminal. That's what we want. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a server with Express. So let's install Express. We'll do npm i for install Express. Press enter, and that's going to install the Express library that we can use to set up a server. As you can see, we now have a dependency with the current version or later of Express. All right, so we can close out of that. Next one I'm going to do is set up a new JavaScript file called index. This will be our startup file. So this index.js file is going to start a server up. And so let's bring a reference to express. We'll say const express is require. And then we will require the express package. Now express itself is a function that we can run to construct a server or an express app. So I'm going to create another variable called app. And we'll set it equal to express or at least what the function express returns. Now what we now need to do is start our server up. So what a server is, is a program that runs on a computer to listen for incoming network requests with usually HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Now quickly to mention a couple of things you should understand about this. Computers that are connected to the internet have what is known an IP address or a domain name. So an IP address is the numbers that you may have seen for, you know, uh, for your IP address, I guess. <laughs> you probably know what an IP address is. But all computers connected to the internet have their own IP address. So every computer has its own unique IP address. This is how one computer can find another. Now, usually what we'll do is not type in an IP address when we're going to a website. We type in a domain name, let's say google.com. But there's a system called the DNS, the domain name system, that figures out the corresponding IP address that belongs to google.com. Now, we are going to develop our server locally on our computer but later we want to uh, deploy it so 
we want to be able to set up this express server on our computer. Now, currently, I can guarantee you there's all kinds of other programs also on my computer running that are doing something with the internet. And that will also be the case if we're going to deploy it. You're probably going to have a shared server where there's other people's servers running. So we need to figure out which program or which um yeah, well, which service running on a computer we need to connect to. So when we set up a new server, we need to open that on a port. And a port is a part of an IP address or part of a computer um, where a certain single service can run on. In this case, that's going to be our express server. Now we can, for example, create a little variable and I'm going to just create a constant variable called port. And I'm going to set it equal to, let's say, 5000. This is a port that I usually use for developing my server, it really doesn't matter. You can take one, two, three, four. There's a couple of ports reserved for some things like port 80. Um, just out of the top of my head, that's one of the ports that I know about. So basically you want to start your server up on a port that is not being used. Now I'm going to use port 5000. I'll come back to this port in a second. But now what we can do is we can tell this Express app to listen for incoming requests on my computer on port 5000 or on the port that we have stored in the variable and we can do it by saying express app dot listen and then we set in uh, we use this configuration we give it a port so i'm just going to use that constant variable and then we can also have a callback function which will run once the express app has started so i'm going to just uh, do console.log in an arrow function so we'll run this arrow function which will run console.log and in there in backticks I'm going to use a template literal and I'm going to say server started on port and then we can just template in with a dollar sign and curly brackets the actual port we are starting on. So this should now be a file or a script that will start an express app. So let's run it with node, oh not npm, node uh, index. And as you can see, it now says server started on port 5000. So great, our server is starting. We didn't get any errors. Let's do control C to close our server again. Now, one quick thing to mention about the port. I have now determined we are going to run our app on port 5000. But later when we're going to deploy it, I'm going to deploy it to an online hosting provider called Heroku. Um, Heroku will probably reserve a port for us that they want us to use. So we need to detect what port Heroku wants to use. So for that, Heroku and many other hosting providers will set up what's called an environment variable. That's not an environment, sorry, that's not a variable in a script or something like that. But it's an environment set on the runtime or the environment. In this case, that will be Node. So Heroku is going to set up a variable inside of Node that they, uh, for the port that they want us to use. And we can actually detect that by saying process to interact with the node process dot env. And that is an object that stores all of the environment variables. And Heroku will set up a port variable. Now, if I run this, it says here server started on port undefined, which is not really correct because, uh, well, very likely the port it doesn't exist. Uh, this port a ver a ver environment variable does not exist. At least it's undefined. So the server hasn't really started, right? So that isn't what doesn't work. And the reason is I have not actually created an environment variable called port. And we're also not hosting it currently. So Heroku or another hosting provider hasn't set it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the OR operator and put 5000 behind it. So it's trying to use the port variable. But if it's undefined, it's going to do whatever's behind the OR. And then we're just going to use it from 5000. So with this little line of code, we can... Uh, select a port for local development on port 5000 or the port that Heroku or another hosting provider wants us to use. And as you can see, now it starts back on port 5000. Now, another quick thing I would like to set up um, is Node-mon. So I constantly have to type in node index and then every time I change something, so let's uh, put a little emoji here, for example. And I save this file. The server is still running the old code. So I would have to close out of it and open it up again. And I guess, I guess the, uh, uh, the emoji is not known by the console. But uh, I have to cancel out of the server every time and start it up again by running node index. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install another package. So we use npm to install another package called node-mon. And I'm going to install it with the dash capital D flag. That is a development package. So we'll install node-mon as a development package or development dependency. Now, that is a dependency that's not necessarily required to execute our code, but it's a development tool. We can see in our package.json, we now have dev dependency, node-mon. So with node-mon, if I would run node-mon index, this is actually going to start up our server. So it will just run the index file. And you can see it has started up. But every time we now change our code, 
so let's say high server started on port and I save it, then you can see it has automatically restarted. This is a nice little tool that will restart our server, our node server for us every time we make changes to our code. Now, another thing that we can do to even further help us is to set up an npm script. So let's put an npm script here on top. So that is under a scripts um, property of this JSON object. So we have scripts, which is an object itself. And in there, we can set up our own script. So I'm going to make a start script. And with npm, we can run the start script by typing npm start, as you can see. And it was basically a shortcut for typing a command we can put down here. So for example, the start command would be node index. And I'm also going to set up a dev script, which we can run with uh, npm run dev. And that will be node mon index. So it's just a little shortcut so we don't have to remember exactly the code for this. There might be other configurations uh, for these commands later to make them even longer and more complex. But it's all fine. So now I can run npm start. And it's going to run node index for me. And this is actually what Heroku will use. Once we upload our code to Heroku for deployment, Heroku will start a server by running npm start. We can also now do npm run uh, dev. So with start, you don't have to type run because it's so common. But with other commands like dev, you have to say npm run dev. And as you can see, now it has started node mon index. And that is how we can start a server. So very easy to remember. Just type npm run dev and your server starts again locally. All right. Now, one final thing to do is actually test if the server works. So what we're going to do is create something called an endpoint. So I'm going to say app.get to make an endpoint that listens for a get request, an HTTP get method request. And I'm going to make it on our server's domain slash test. So... With this function, we have set up an endpoint, something that we can listen for, a request we can listen for, and we will listen for a get request on the path slash test. And if we get that, I want to handle that with a function. So Express actually sets up a request and a response object. Uh, the request object is basically a JavaScript object describing the HTTP request. The response object is a JavaScript object with functions we can use to describe an HTTP response and then send it. So, for example, we can say res.send, which is going to send, in this case, a string of text, and we'll say it works. So now this is started, um, and I'm going to use a little program called Insomnia. So we'll start it up. Um, I'll provide a link in the description below these videos for a link to Insomnia, so you can download it. Uh, you do want to get Insomnia Core, not the other program. Insomnia is a very lightweight API testing tool. You can use it to make HTTP requests to, let's say, a server. You may also have heard about Postman, which is another great program, but uh, I don't really like Postman. It's way too cluttered. Um, they require you now to create an account, which I find really stupid. So I like Insomnia. It's way more lightweight. It just works. It's free. Out of the box, it works. So what we can do is on the left here, we can, for example, create a folder where we can store some common requests we'd like to repeat later. So let's call it the mern of, uh, we actually don't need to use a dash. And we're basically creating a template here. So I'm going to provide this code for you as a little template. You can start building your more complex apps from, or you can, of course, follow along, of course, with this tutorial, create your own little of template for mern stack. And uh, we can create a new request. So let's say we're going to call this request test. This is just the name how we save it in Insomnia. It has nothing to do with the request itself. And we are going to create a get method request. So that's fine. We'll click create. Then on top here, we can set up the actual URL. So that will be HTTP colon slash slash to start an HTTP request. And currently the server is running on my computer. So that will be local host. That will, local host, the word local host will take the IP address of my computer. And then we're going to say colon 5000 to send a request to my computer's IP address on the port 5000. And then slash test. That's the path where we have set up the endpoint on our server, which is running on port 5000. So let's click send. And we get a preview, it works. So we get a status code of 200, which means okay, the request has succeeded. We can see how long it took, the amount of bytes or kilobytes or megabytes or gigabytes even, of how big the responsive is. It's only eight letters, so it's eight bytes. Um, we get the preview, you can also see the raw data, which is basically the same, it's just text. But this is basically rendered text in a HTML page. Um, you could also send HTML code or whatever you want. We can see the headers. So there's some headers describing the request. You can read cookies if they were sent. 
And in the timeline, you can see the actual text in the, the text that uh, described the uh, request. And I see actually we have sent a cookie. Um, that's because I still have a cookie in here. Let me just quickly delete that because that's not supposed to be there. We'll talk about cookies later, actually. But now you can see we have no cookie. So we'll actually talk about cookies later. But uh, yeah, this cookie was automatically sent because I had a cookie that belongs to localhost 5000 still in insomnia doesn't matter we'll talk about cookies later you should probably not have that if you have never used cookies before but yeah this describes the outgoing request so you see get method to slash test the http method or http version you can see the host so we see the path as well so with with this information it figures out where it needs to go some other stuff in there and then we have the response uh describing this is all describing the response you know, it's nothing that we really care about too much all right so that is a basic setup of an express server we have just set everything up and it works now in the next video we are going to create a database with mongodb and connect to it with mongoose and then we have a working express app and we've connected to mongodb so then we can finally start to create some endpoints to register and log people in register accounts log them in log them out stuff like that so next video will be setting up a database with mongodb